All right, so we've got our particles up here and cooking right along, and that's pretty great. That's feeling really good, and I like that an awful lot. Um, but there are some things here that we haven't necessarily explored very much, right, that we might want to play with a little bit more. Uh, and one of those things which we haven't actually done a whole lot of work with, uh, which I think would be great for us to take a chance to just kind of peek at a little bit, is our animation editor. Now, the animation editor is uh, an excellent way that we can start to think about how we queue different events here inside of Touch Designer. Uh, we can use it to do all sorts of uh, custom building in terms of ramps and graphs, uh, as well as how we feed different events, right? So we're not, we're certainly not going to touch on all of the things that we can do with this, um, but we can certainly get started with a few different ideas. So to get started, let's head over to the comps. Let's add an animation comp here to our network. We'll plunk that right down. And to get started, let's go ahead and let's right click on this and let's edit the animation. Now, once we uh, open up our edit animation parameter, we can see that we get whew, this cool thing down here at the bottom. We've got a timeline down here that corresponds to our actual timeline. There we can see our time bar run past. If we hit the H key to home, oh, we need to add a channel first. Well, once we home, we'll see this all fit, which will be great. And in fact, we could use uh, the F key that'll get, move us out a little bit further, right? And we can see, oh, and somehow all of my, oh, my regions got all uh, kerflunk today. That's all right. So over here, right, we can see my region is 76 to 169, 196. So let's set my region start from 1 to 600. So there we go. Great, that's my region. That corresponds to this thing, of course. Perfect. Um, let's go ahead and let's add a few things here. So let's start by thinking about how we might use our animation uh, comp to do something fun. So what I want to do is I want to draw a custom shape, right? I want to use a, a kind of new line that I can use to alter the shape of this line. What, what might that look like? So let's go ahead and uh, let's change the name of what we want to make. I want to make something called TY. I'm going to add that channel. We can see now that I'm starting at frame one. I go all the way to frame 601. Right, so I've got my 600 frames here that I'm working with. Well, I can see the time bar chug right along. Lovely. If I click on this line, if I hold down the Alt key, I get a set of crosshairs. And that's going to allow me to add another keyframe. Right? It gives me the ability to add a point. I'm going to hold down the Alt key. I'm going to add another one. Now you'll see that I've got little handles here, so I can kind of change the curve shape of this a little bit, right? We'll also notice that what I see outputting over here, right? So what I see coming out of my animation comp corresponds to where the playhead is inside of this animation. If I were to do something like attach a trail chop to the end of this, we'll see that I'm going to draw the same graph, right? Our trail is just hold something in time. I'm drawing the same graph that I have over here. And in fact, if I change this trail to have a window length of 10 seconds, which corresponds to the length of our actual timeline, we'll see by the end of this that we've drawn the whole graph, right? Which is great. That's really a wonderful tool to have at our disposal. So we could see the scale looks a little bit different, and that's because one's up here and negative eight's down here. We can use the H key to home. That'll frame this a little bit better for us so we can see what's going on. So I want to I want to do a couple of interesting uh, things here. I might want to grab this, move this over here. I want to kind of level this out a little bit and create a different kind of swoop over here. So I've got this kind of like funky pattern in my line. Yeah, there we go. So right when I'm after is I'm thinking about how I'm going to make a new line that's going to fit, that's going to kind of uh, change the shape of this line. That's what I'm up to. Let's go ahead and leave this for right now. We'll go ahead and close this. We're going to delete our trail and we're going to look at our animation comp. So we can see here that it's outputting um, what's what it sees in terms of that graph. Right, and we can see that these aren't very big numbers. We might have to change some of those. That's okay. 
But we can see that if we look over here in its parameters, it's locked to our timeline. So we could change that. We could go ahead and change that to sequential, right? And then we could pulse this. So we could actually start this and see it run for the full 10 seconds. And in fact, if we add a trail at the end of this, we can see what that looks like, right? So let's come back and let's pulse this, right? We can see that we're queuing this particular animation and how it works. I can also, if I want to, I can output the full range. So now I just get this custom graph that I've drawn. And that's really what I want to do this time around. That's really what uh, the kind of like uh, playful thing that I want to start to futz about with. So let's go ahead and attach this to a null. So I'm going to plug this right into a null. That's great. I'm going to insert another chop to. So we're going to go ahead and add another chop to down here. Now I've got this lovely chop to over here. I'm going to take my null three. I'm going to drag it on top. We can see like, all right, what gives? Like we don't know where things go. So over here, I just want to worry about ty. And I don't want up to apply that to all my point attributes. I only want to apply that to my Y position. Now we'll see there's an interesting thing that's happening here, right? So this guy goes and goes and goes and then it stops. And that's because this particular, right, our line over here very smartly is being drawn um, to make sure that we have uh, 600, or this line is being drawn uh, with 700 and change samples, right? 735 samples, because that corresponds to what's happening with our audio. Now, we only happen to have 600 samples over here in this, uh, because 600 is the number of samples that's associated with our timeline, and that's where we, uh, what we got out of our animation comp. So, ooh, what are we to do? There are lots of, you know, geez, problems to solve here. Well, let's go ahead and go to our chop two. And let's take advantage of the fact that we can just go ahead and ask this to resample the chop to fit my SOP. So we've resampled that so that now we've got enough samples for all the points there. That's excellent. And now we can see that our particles are emitting off of this line. We don't see the ones in negative space because we need to move this a little bit, right? So now we've got this kind of funky psychedelic line that we're using or we're drawing all of our particles from. Oh yeah, that's very fun. Let's turn that back on and let's head back over to our animation comp. And let's go ahead back and edit this again. Now looking at this, this feels like it's almost a little too tall for the size of my window. So I'm gonna just go ahead and change this a little bit, right? And we can see that as I edit this, right, it live changes what's going on here. Perfect, all right. I'm liking the way that's looking. So that's a lot of fun. Um, but I have some other things I might want to do. Like, let's say, for example, I'd like the option to be able to crossfade between my original line that was just straight and this kind of crazy, uh, big, swoopy thing. OK, well, we can certainly do that. Let's go ahead and let's make a chop to sop. Right, so here we've gone ahead and pulled out all of the T, X, Y, and Z information from our original line. That's great. Let's select out of this just our T, Y, because that's really all we need. Now we could do this thing where we just plug it right back in and we go back, that'll work. But we could also use a cross chop. So if we use our cross chop, this will allow us to kind of dynamically cross fade between our two inputs here. Let's swap these. Right, and we can see that as we run from zero to one, that our line changes and it will change back. That's pretty swanky, I like that. Okay. So we can chug right along there, that's wonderful. I'm liking how that's uh, working. Now there's one other way that I want us to think about using the animation comp here. Uh, besides just kind of outputting custom graphs, because outputting custom graphs is really quite lovely and wonderful, and you know, really, what is there not to love about that? But there are a few other things that we might think about doing with this as well. So let's go ahead and let's add another animation comp to our network. Let's go ahead and turn off our pixels here for just a second so we can see what we're doing a little bit better. 
And let's, whoops, back out of here and let's right click and edit this animation. Okay, now this particular animation, I want to think about how I might use this uh, to uh, make a few different kind of like dynamic things happen. So I'm going to mostly want to stay, mm, well, I don't know. That's a good question. Hmm. Well, let's first, let's call this turb because we're going to make a little bit of turbulence here. Let's add that channel. And well, you know, let's make something first and then if we want to change it, we certainly can make changes, right? That's uh, not a hard thing for us to do. So let's start by uh, leaving this at zero. I know I'm going to want a couple keyframes in here, so I'm going to add mm, maybe three. I want to also end back at zero, so I only wor worry about changing these ones here in the middle. I'm going to grab my first keyframe here, and I think I want to set it somewhere around like two. So I can see I'm at frame 94. I can give it an actual direct value of two in there. Now it's moved outside of where I can see it. So let's just use the H key to home and that will fit us back into view here. This next keyframe, I want us to drop down a little bit. I want there to be a little bit of a curve. I want this to move over here a little bit. And then before we're done, I want this guy to come down. I want us to dip just a little before we even back out. Now we'll maybe make a little bit of a change here. And maybe this can be more like 2.45. Okay. So there we've got a little bit of a curve shape. We've got some idea of how this is gonna move. Now let's make a few other changes. So while we're here, let's go ahead and let's use a button. And we're gonna take this button uh, and we're going to use it to cue this animation, right? So to get started here, first we want to go to the range portion of our animation. Uh, or excuse me, when we start an animation and we want to go ahead and output sequential. So this is going to allow us to cue this. We can see how that allows us to cue it. Now the problem here is that because um, of our range options, the way that we're set up is that we'll just kind of continue to cycle all the way through this. So on the right side of this, let's just hold. So we're going to get to zero and then hold at zero. This means that when we cue this animation, we pulse this, we'll run through the whole 10 seconds, and then we'll just hold at the final value that we have here. We should see us land right at zero here pretty soon. Perfect. So let's figure out how we could cue this. So here in our cue pulse, let's go ahead and assign the operator that's button one, and we know inside of button one is something called out one, and we want to pull out of that the channel that's called V1. Lovely, which means now when I hit my button over here, that cues this animation. Excellent. Let's go ahead and attach a null coming out of this. Perfect. And we can close our animation viewer. Now, our particles have an attribute um, on forces called turbulence. And turbulence is what I want us to play with here a little bit. So let's go ahead and make our null viewer active. We'll grab turb, bring it all the way over, hover over particles, bring it to turbulence for Tx, create a little relative reference there. Okay, so that's all well and good, but that doesn't seem to have done anything. That's all right. Because now what we can do is let's go ahead and cue our turbulence. And we should see, whoops, there we go. We should see that start to affect our particles. Whoa. All right. So it's not quite a dramatic enough effect. So let's edit our animation. Let's maybe turn this up to something more like four. Let's keep this somewhere closer to maybe like, right, we've got a nice little curve kind of thing that's going to happen here. Maybe not quite like that. Let's make our negative values a little more prominent, maybe like negative two. Right, and now let's see what that looks like. Let's cue that. And one more time, cue. Whoa, yeah. Okay, that's feeling pretty good. So one of the things that's happening here with my queuing this, right, is we forgot to make one change, which is our button should be set to momentary, not toggle. So now we should be able to just cue that away, right? So now we cue it and we'll see our particles, whoa, take over and move and swirl and move all around. 
and come back. Whoa. All right. That's pretty swanky. Right? Okay. So that's a part of what we were after there. And that's looking pretty darn swanky. I'm feeling good about that. So far, that is. Let's... Yeah, well, let's look at one other thing that we might do with what's going on here with our particles. Now, we've used our point sprite to do some of this, right? So let's just, for one second, we're going to go ahead and drop in a constant material instead. And we'll drop our constant material onto our geo. Right now, this isn't nearly as pretty. Um, we might think about coming over here to our particle. Uh, what if we rendered that as lines instead, right? So now we've got these kind of like comedy kinds of things going on. So we might use our animation editor to do something even different. So let's go ahead and grab this because we've already got this guy waiting here for us. So let's copy paste. We've got one more animation editor here now. Uh, let's go ahead and edit our animation. And I'm going to use the little X to go ahead and get rid of what's already in here. And now I don't want to add one channel, but I want to add three channels. So I'm going to use brackets RGB. A? Mm, yeah, why not? RGBA. And I just want to add those channels. Great. So now I've got RGBA as my output channels. And we can see that up here, that they're certainly there. Now, uh, RGBA, right, we think mostly in a system of 0 to 1. 1 being totally white, 0 being completely opaque. Right, if we're thinking about all of these values. So let's go ahead and let's start with alpha. And I'm going to go ahead and give this a value of 1 at the front. And I think I want it to be 1 at the end of this. And somewhere in the middle here, I want a few little dips before we, re we return. So I might want us to dip down here to like 0.8. And then we've got like a little peak and valley kind of a thing that's going to happen. Okay, so you, we, I use the H key there and we can see a little bit more dramatic shift in all of this. Let's find our red channel. So let's look at red and let's also, with red, let's go ahead and start with a value of 1. Similarly, we're going to end with a value of 1, right? So part of what I'm thinking here is that we're going to kind of begin this whole affair at white and end this affair at white, but in the middle we're going to have a little bit of variation in terms of what's going on with our color. So I'm going to add lots of keyframes in here, and we might have a little bit more kind of like swooping variation in how this works. Okay, green, same drill, different channel, one and one. Now I want to make sure that I'm not overlapping here, so I can actually click, if I hold down the shift key, I can click multiple channels and get both of them to show up. Right, I'm going to use Alt again to add some keyframes to green. I can see how I might play with this in a slightly different way. And finally, blue is the last channel that I'm going to start to think about. And we'll make sure that we start at 1, we end at 1. And maybe with blue, I only want to add one keyframe here. And I think that keyframe, you know what, I want to go ahead and specify that it's at 300, frame 300, so it's right in the middle. And I want it to drop all the way down here, almost to zero, before it comes back. I'm going to hold down alpha as well. So we can see now how these animation channels are going to just uh, pipe right out here. And if we cue that, we can see these guys are going to run. We see all of that happen, and we should see us all return to a default value of 1 at the end. There we are. Okay. So let's see what happens when we start to play with this. Let's go ahead and close this. Now, I need to assign it all the way over here to my constant colors. Let's find an easier way to do that. Let's view our null, and we can just bring it on over here with us. We're going to come over to our constant, and in the color, let's just pull on over R, G, 
B, and finally A. RGB and A. Let's also make sure while we're here that our blending transparency is turned on. We'll be happier probably with the way that it outputs here. And let's see what happens when we click this button. Whoa, we should see our colors change dynamically as we roll through all of these. And by the time we're done, we should end up back here at white. All right, that's pretty fun. That is, that's pretty, all right. Right, and we could continue to play with that to try and find what it is that we liked best in terms of how that worked. Um, but this is another kind of example of how you can start to play with and experiment with what the animation comp does and how you can use it. Now, don't forget that we could also, while we're at it, we could turn this back to being just a line. So we could have just this line. We could still run the same animation that's going to run the turbulence and also all of our color. And you might think about how you could use this same animation idea to make sure that you actually drive something uh, here and how we're driving our cross as well. All right, so that is uh, working with some particles and playing with their velocity, as well as a little bit of noodling with the animation editor. I hope uh, you guys got something out of that. Again, many thanks to Ben Voigt, ben Voigt excuse me, for uh, all of the lovely techniques I learned from him when I was at the workshop at Obscura. And coming up next, we're going to look at uh, one of Greg Romanovic's favorite operators, the timer chop. All right, till then. <laughs>